Good evening. My name is Bill Burrow. I'm the city manager for the city of Hot Springs. And, you know, what a great... <laughs> Uh, thank you. Um, you know, this is incredible to have this type of turnout. We had 45 RSVPs, and uh, just to see the others that have interest come on in, we, we appreciate that. You know, I think the Majestic is something that, that is not only important for the city of Hot Springs, it's, it's important for our state. We are looking to have something on that particular parcel, parcel that's, that's world class, and I think we're going to achieve that. Uh, this has been a long road. Uh, Lance is going to talk a little bit about where we've been and how we got to this point. Uh, but just for me, I just want to say thank you. I appreciate your attendance here tonight and the interest that you have in the Majestic property. And uh, hopefully over the, next, over the course of the next couple of days, we'll have a, a good vision, that, several visions that we can take to our board to uh, make that final decision on what will happen on that particular piece of property. And soon we'll have some RFPs forthcoming to, uh, to start that process. So with that, I'll turn it over to Lance. And again, thank you for being here. Uh, thank you, Mr. Burrow. Uh, I'd like to echo his, uh, his comments as well. We're glad to have everybody here. I know it has been a long time coming. And uh, really, we're excited to have everybody. And uh, we've got a couple, we've got some great partners here, and I'm going to let them uh, introduce themselves as they come up. But we really do have some good folks from the University of Arkansas, uh, K-State, and then also we've got our friends here with uh, ADEQ. So uh, as they come up, um, obviously, we've, uh, it's taken a lot of partners to get here, so we're glad, glad that they could be a part of this as well. Um, really, as we start, um, this right here is called a Wordle. I don't know if some people may be uh, aware of what this is. All those online comments that have been uh, submitted, this really is indicative of the comments. If you see the larger font uh, words, those are things that have, were submitted over and over multiple times. So uh, I believe they're also on the walls. So the, uh, the Wordle for the Majestic has lots and lots of opportunity. So that's one of the things that we're excited to have. And um, as you can see, and it'll also be addressed later. That's, that's really some of the things, the comments that the citizens have submitted. So as we move forward, we, we look to, to emphasize some of these uh, particular uh, words moving forward. Really what we're here to do, uh, I'll start it off with, the Board of Directors did adopt some guiding values uh, for this site. And I think most of everyone here is, is somewhat aware they've seen the guiding values. But uh, really that was adopted by a resolution back in 2017. And as uh, Bill said, we've been dealing with uh, the Majestic property, the redevelopment, and to get to this point um, for some time. So uh, first up on the guiding value, we, we want the projects, the proposals to come forth. They need to enhance economic opportunities. I think that goes without saying that's obviously a, a main tenant. Second is improve the local quality of life and enhance visitor experience. This has to be something, a project, that obviously is beneficial to the community, but also to our many visitors that, that come to Hot Springs. Third, celebrate the natural wonder of our thermal water. Hot Springs is unique in many aspects, and obviously the thermal water is, is certainly one of them. And if you look at the, uh, the, the Wordle, obviously thermal is, is one of the large uh, recurring themes in it. So, so I think that also goes without saying. And last but not least, respect the arts, culture, and history of Hot Springs. Hot Springs is a unique place. It's had a lot of, uh, it's, got a, it's got a colorful past. It's obviously going to have a, a very bright future. So whatever the majestic proposal that comes forth, we really do expect it to, to have a really large impact, um, not only on Hot Springs, Garland County, Arkansas, and hopefully nationwide. Um, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Noah with the University of Arkansas. Thank you, Lance. Hello, my, my name is Noah Billig. I'm an assistant professor in landscape architecture in the Fajon School of Architecture and Design at the University of Arkansas. Um, I'd like to introduce a couple 
our, a few of our colleagues, Greg Herman is a, a, a professor in architecture in our school. Kayla Bertels is a fifth year architecture student that's we working with us tonight. And Ken McCown is a department chair in landscape architecture and an adjunct professor of, of uh, architecture as well. So uh, Greg will be speaking in a minute. Um, so I'm, I'm just going to go over the process for tonight and then and the process that we're involved with and the process that we're all involved with together in this room so we're working until 8 30 um, we're going to be uh, giving an introduction about both the goals of this project but also some of the history of of this site um, and we'll we'll have representatives from Arkansas Department of Environmental Quality um, talking about the site conditions and we'll also have um, representatives from K-State talking about this process as well. Um, and then tonight, we're after we talk about this, we're going to go into a visioning process for tonight. Um, it's going to entail small work, um, small group work um, for people at the tables. Um, we were beyond the capacity that we anticipated, so we will try to think of ways to get people who aren't at tables um, to get their their ideas in too. And at the end of this presentation, I'll give some instructions about how we're going to go about this so it can be organized and people's voices can be heard. Um, and then we're going to vote on ideas. So we have we have some dots where people can vote. When we're, we're going to present some ideas on that wall, and we'll be able to vote with them with some colored dots so you can see what your what ideas are really striking a chord. Um, one thing to note is we we saw that some people brought plans with them or and drawings. Um, and this isn't the venue for that tonight. This is a venue for garnering community input. It's not a, so if you, um, we're, we appreciate people who maybe brought drawings that um, are not from the city, from Hot Springs, but this is really, a, a, tonight's meeting is really about getting ideas from what residents want, so, and what community members want. So just, just to be clear about that. So, um, uh, t tomorrow, we're going to be compiling the results, at least the preliminary re results of this meeting, and presenting this at noon tomorrow. And where's the location? Same place. Same place at noon tomorrow, and there'll be a brief presentation about the findings, and then a, a question and answer session as well. Um, and then the near future, our team from the University of Arkansas is going to compile a report of the summaries of this, and then. Have, give that to the city for dissemination and to you know, form form guiding principles for how you how we're going to go forward or how you all are going to go forward with the majestic site. And just to be clear, we're not even though we're all designers, we're not here to tell you exactly what the designs are. We're here and we're not coming to draw th draw things. We're here to guide this process and and work with you, but to get your your input. Um, and I guess I spoke ahead of my slide here, but it's a, you know, it's, again, this report is to prioritize the top design and program ideas. So we're really going to focus on what, what design qualities people want, what elements they might want, what uses they might want. And then also we're going to, as part of the early process, we're going to do a strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats analysis tonight um, at your tables and get some of, some of those issues out on the table before we get into the design proposals and program proposals. Um, and just to be clear about the participation process tonight, um, we're committed, by both us, but um, particularly the city's committed to involve the public in this process. And so the, there's a stated goal to work directly with the public throughout the process to ensure that public concerns and aspirations are consistently understood and considered. And the promise from the city is that we'll work with you to ensure that your concerns and aspirations are directly reflected in alternative, alternatives developed and provide feedback on how that public input influenced the decision. Um, and then additionally, uh, there's a goal of collaboration. So there's the, the city's committed to this and the goal is to partner with the public in each app aspect of the decision, including the development of alternatives and the identification of a preferred solution. And the, the promise from the city is that they'll, we'll look 
to you to, or they'll look to you for advice and innovation in formulating solutions and incorporate that advi advice and recommendations into the decisions to the maximum extent possible. And just to, to let you know, this is part of a, what's called the International Association of Public Participation Spectrum for Public Participation, where in this spectrum of participation, where in this, these two boxes right here in orange, and so the, the point is that cities committed to connecting to authentic participation processes, and this is from a, a bona fide participation organization, and so th that wording on these previous two slides comes directly from this, and so they're, they're committed to that. So um, just to, to start out, we want to emphasize this. So we have this drawing up here. It's, we plotted it out here on the wall as well. Um, this majestic hotel um, belongs in this key urban context, as, as you all know. And we've, one thing that we've noticed as um, when we've researched this, this area is how, just how you know, stretched out the city is along Central Avenue. And we, we think that whatever the solution is, it, can, it has a, a potential ability to really become the key node or one of the key nodes at the end of Central Avenue. And that we've noticed that there's such disparate um, programs and uses that are so valuable, but they're so spread out um, largely along that Central Avenue corridor, from Lake Hamilton to the racetrack to downtown. So um, we're um, committed to that urban context. And with that, I'm going to pass it over to Greg Herman to talk about the historic context. Oh, sure. Yeah. I just had a question about the meeting tomorrow. You said yeah. at 12 o'clock. Yes. Um, 12 to 2.30. 12, 12 to 2.30. So, 12 to 2.30. 12 to 2.30. Not, okay. So 12, 12 o'clock and it'll run till it's, till it's done, I guess, until 2.30. Okay. Great. Thank you, Noah. Um, I'm Greg Herman, as Noah introduced me. Uh, I am an associate professor in the Department of Architecture at the University of Arkansas School, uh, Faye Jones School of Architecture and Design. Um, it's good that I have a microphone because I otherwise I'd have to be yelling and I'd, I'd probably lose my voice very quickly. I'm bowled over by the number of people that are here, um, which is really impressive. Uh, I assume that's a very good thing that you all are here because you love your community. Um, I have been involved in this project in some capacity for a couple of years now um, with a, a, uh, the continuing team, but also with a previous team. Uh, Noah described some of the, the uh, proceeds, let's call them, from, from that earlier meeting. Noah pointed out the map here of the roughly six mile uh, run from the uh, majestic site, which is at the top of the map, uh, it's clear on the on the on the printed out and on, on the projected. But uh, work with me here. Uh, about six miles from the majestic site down to the lake, and what we have noticed, uh, we we fairly randomly made uh, five areas uh, characterizing five different parts of town: uh, the Arts and Historic District, North Central Avenue, the Oak Lawn area. South Central Avenue and the Lake District, as we're calling it. And one of our concerns, and, and I guess I, and ultimately I'd call it a design opportunity, is, is that folks that come to Hot Springs quite often will find themselves, tourists that is, will find, and perhaps even locals will come and find themselves in one area, but not particularly uh, patronize or, or spend time in any of the other areas. Folks that may come to Oak Lawn may never come up to the Majestic site or areas around that. And that's one of our concerns uh, uh, for this project, that it be something that serve as a, an adequate magnet um, and a draw for folks up to that end of Central Avenue, which is really the, the gateway to the city coming from anywhere from the north. Um, 
I have a number of slides to run through with you. Uh, this is a, uh, I hope you can all see them up there. Yes, reasonably enough. Um, oh, before I go to that, let me just say, t say something about the materials that are on your table. Um, you have uh, a num. oh, that's nice. Um, <laughs> Vegas style. Um, there, there, are, uh, there are a number of maps on your tables uh, and adequate paper and markers that you all can either do in Word or even more uh, helpful in graphic form. Uh, the sort of, of uh, the sort of, of, of uh, project you would like to see develop at that site. Uh, and that's the sort, those are the things that we will be pinning up and you'll be, you'll have a chance to review everybody's uh, uh, sketches and, and thoughts over the course of the evening. So don't be afraid to use any or all of that paper. Don't, this is not a drawing contest. Um, um, however, uh, you would like to record your thoughts graphically or in Word, we highly encourage. So this is a, a, a view of the, uh, excuse me, the, the historic district um, and the North Central Avenue part of Hot Springs uh, from the aerial, from the convention center where we are now. You can see at the bottom of the image all the way up to the majestic hotel site at the, at the top. This is the densest part of, of the city as I know it. Uh, probably all of you, certainly all of you know the city much better than I do, but as a, as a Fayetteviller, I come down here and my image of Hot Springs is, is this, primarily this portion of the city. Uh, and it is in fact the densest uh, and ultimately most urban portion of the city. Um, this is a, a view of the um, majestic site. Uh, prior to demolition and post demolition and you can see just how dramatically uh, it has changed in the city um, that what had been a relatively dense uh, um, street edge street edge uh, observing uh, development that is to say that very complex corner where Whittington and Central come together uh, uh, is defined by the street wall uh, by the density of buildings there has been completely blown away by the removal of the Majestic Hotel uh, and, its, and its associated uh, expansion buildings such that, that that intersection now is formless and without definition. And so it's not just the fact that we want a project, we want to see a project there, but we want to see street and urban de uh, definition there. Something that is going to restore, not necessarily in a nostalgic way, but something that is going to restore uh, the urbanity of the site and provide an adequate uh, uh, gateway into the city from that spot. Uh, a number of historic photos uh, and, and images. Uh, this is the, the site. Uh, at the Y at the top of the, of the image, the majestic site, uh, circa 1878 when the uh, population, I guess we, we learned that the population at the beginning of the Civil War was about 200 or so. Uh, things have changed. Um, they, there, are a number, there are a number of sites that are, that are particularly distressing. Uh, one observation that we have made has been that when Hot Springs demolishes a building, when Hot Springs takes away a building, what usually goes in its place afterwards, at least uh, evidence would suggest, is less than what was there before, both in terms of use and in, ter in terms of density, and quite often in terms of its relationship to the street. Um, so this very handy aristocrat parking, uh, which is on Central Avenue, uh, built in 1961, replaced uh, the opera house that was built in 1882. Now, the loss is not entirely about style. In fact, it's really not about style at all. The loss is the fact that in the opera house of 1882, you have a very strong street definition uh, with that building, right? 
You have something that uh, appears to be a city building that is a city building and that holds an edge versus uh, this building, which is almost like knocking the teeth out of, out of, out of somebody's beautiful smile. Um, the same thing is happening in various waves uh, at Whittington Central and Park. This is the, the uh, fountain that was there around 1900. Uh, this is the fountain that is there now with the, the majestic buildings that you can see on the left and uh, the, the commercial buildings that you see on the right. Um, that's not the majestic on the left, excuse me. That's looking down central towards the, towards the Arlington, forgive me. Um, uh, luckily, the buildings that you see in this image are still there. Um, the Pullman Hotel, circa 1900, and the site of the Pullman Hotel today, which is uh, almost uh, entirely parking lot. Um, I have heard that there is some development that's coming to that lot fairly soon. Uh, it is a site that needs quite a bit more density. Um, Central Avenue from the Arlington. You can see the, uh, the um, Majestic in the upper right hand corner and the building that is now the ASMSA, uh, an ASMSA property uh, up at the left. I just want to say one little thing about that because the ASMSA building is outside the scope of our project but I know that that building is slated to be demolished and I think that that would be a grievous mistake for, for, um, for Hot Springs. And for those of you that may be concerned about it, you have the opportunity to rally around it before, uh, before anything like that can happen. It's my understanding that it's a demolition, uh, the demolition, that the space for that building will be replaced by open space. Now remember what I've said about defining streets uh, urban frontage and density. If we lose that, we've lost, we've, we've knocked out still more teeth uh, in, in the smile of uh, Hot Springs. Central Avenue from the Arlington looking towards the Majestic at the end of the street. There's the Majestic on the right and the Belle de Rose at the extreme right and uh, the cleared space across from the hotel, which is yet another problematic site. This is the uh, St. Joseph's Infirmary, the ASMSA building that is slated for demolition. Um, The Med Arts Building, um, a real treasure in Arkansas, uh, in Arkansas architecture. Um, it is all of the hope for all of us that, that uh, something good will happen to that building before it's too late. Um, but it really is, from a design standpoint and from an urbanistic standpoint, an absolute treasure. Um, the Milwaukee Hotel from 1972, you're all familiar with this site. This building uh, came down and was replaced by a parking garage. Um, and the lots in front of it uh, remain undeveloped. Um, and again, uh, what is missing there is street edge. If you walk along Bathhouse Row and through the historic North Central Avenue area, you will notice that the most successful places the places that people most want to be are the places where the buildings form the street edge, form a strong street edge, and the space of the street, which includes sidewalks, which includes the promenade in front of the bathhouses, is a very carefully defined public space. The canopies of the trees help define that space. If you eliminate those components, you have lost your city. This is the space across from the Majestic. Uh, it may be a desirable property. It may be a 
an, a, a good restaurant. I haven't eaten there. Um, what I can tell you is, is that it's an, a, a, a prime example of underuse of the site. And this is what I mean when I say that when something is demolished and what is put back is less, this is a perfect example of that. Majestic site. A great overhead view of the whole complex. And unfortunately, the, the 2014 condition oh, slipped in a, a little, uh, the original historic condition, the first major addition, and the night of the fire. The site that's there is really a fantastic site. It's got everything you want. Um, it has the potential for hosting the springs of hot springs. It has the potential for and being serving as an economic generator. It has the potential for being a gathering place and a portal to the city. Now, uh, a few images that show the history of the site taken from Sanborn maps. Sanborn maps are, were used by uh, insurance companies uh, up until about the 1950s to determine uh, the, the, uh, the uh, structure, the building composition of buildings on the site and to help determine their, their uh, fire liability. But what they, they give us is a sequential record of what happens at particular sites. So this is the majestic site right up here in 1901. By 1908, it's a little bit more developed. Keep your eye on that site. Look at also the, the, the spaces around it as they start to develop. And you see that the streets become more defined, more uh, urban. 1925, we have already have a chunk of the Majestic up, up the street, and it's starting by 1950. It's starting to uh, expand down to the corner and define the corner until 2015, uh, when it, the site is completely built out and uh, uh, provides a, a very strong gateway to the city and the current condition. Aerial view. And there we have it. Okay. So I will hand off to my colleague Katie. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Katie Kreps. I'm the Brownfield Coordinator at the Arkansas Department of Environmental Quality. Um, and I'd like to introduce our technical branch manager, Ben Reynolds, who is here today. If you have any specific technical questions after we're done. Um, so I don't have as many historical photos as he did. We, uh, we started work on this property in 2013. Um, so a lot of mine will be more recent photos. Um, so I'm going to give a short history of the site. I know he touched base on it a little bit and tell you about ADEQ's role in this endeavor to help redevelop the property and a little bit about the current site conditions that you're going to be working with. Um, so the first slide here, um, this is just from Google Earth. This is an overview of the property when the Majestic was on site. I believe this was after it had closed, though. 
Um, and we already touched base a little bit, but as you can see from the picture, uh, the property is at an intersection of two main thoroughfares. That's why it's, it's uh, very important for the redevelopment. Uh, it's at the north end of Bath, Bathhouse Row in historic downtown, downtown Hot Springs. Um, and you can see to the west, too, the Arkansas School for Math and Sciences is there. Uh, so the property has a very long history. Uh, throughout its history, it was occupied by a lot of different commercial and residential uh, entities that we don't think of much, some offices, a grocery, drugstore, apartments. Um, but what it's most known for is the Majestic Hotel. Um, if you look on the east side of the property is what's known or was known as the yellow brick portion of the property. Uh, that was constructed in late 18, early 1900s, and it was one of the first brick buildings in Hot Springs. And they later had three other additions to it. The red brick building, um, which is a little bit farther to the west. The Lanai Suites, which is on the northwest corner, and the Lanai Tower. Um, business slowly declined in the 1980s. Eventually, the Majestic closed in 2006. Um, and then the Arkansas Brownfield Program got involved in 2013 when the city of Hot Springs entered the site in it. And then we all know about the fire in 2014. Um, the fire burned and partial, partially demolished the yellow brick portion that was on the east side. Um, so these are just gonna show you a few pictures of, um, of the portion when it was getting demolished. Um, on the right is the yellow brick portion of the building and you can see that it was partially demolished there. In the back corner, in the top right, um, there's actually, there was a laundry facility on the site too, so just kind of pay attention to that because I'm gonna mention it a little bit later. Um, and then the Lanai Suites in the, on the top left corner, you can see where the pools were formerly. And then the red brick portion of the building is on the bottom left corner. And you can see to the right is where the yellow brick portion of the building was. So this was right after the fire. And this is just another view you can see it's looking west into the red brick building. Um, and then the bottom left corner is when they're beginning to do the rest of the demolishing. Uh, that happened in 2016 after the city took title. They demolished the rest of the uh, buildings on site. So I don't know how much you all know about the Brownfield program, but the main goal of it is to promote growth and economic development and trying to utilize structures like this that have been abandoned or under, underutilized before. Um, so what ADEQ was able to do at no charge to the city of Hot Springs, uh, we got our contractors to come out and do assessments and sampling at the site because we want to make sure that everything was safe, basically, so you know what you can do with the property. Um, so they were going out to determine if there were any contaminants of concern. Um, and they only found one contaminant of concern, which was really nice and made it much less expensive. <laughs> um, it was lead. They found a small area of lead contamination. And uh, earlier when I told you to notice the laundry facility in the back corner, that's where this was. So you see that little square there? Um, it's, it was basically in a north west, I think, of, of the yellow brick building. Um, they had levels that were unsafe for, for child residents. Um, so they had to, the city wanted to make sure that the property could be used for whatever you want it to be used for. So uh, the plan was, let's just remove the soil. And like I said, it was a very, very small amount. Uh, I believe it was about 12 and a half cubic yards of soil that needed to be remediated. Um, and by removing these soils and backfilling, it, it made it safe for whatever future use you want. There's no restrictions on the property. Um, uh, in 2018 was when the city of Hot Springs was issued the certificate of completion, which is basically saying that the site is good to go. There's no concerns for the environment or public health or safety in the future. Everything's good and clean. Uh, this picture I just kind of liked. I know it's kind of hard to see. In the middle, it's divided. On the left side, you can see the property before when it had the Majestic on it. And on the right is kind of the clean slate that you have to work with. Um, it's a pretty big area, too. Um, 
And lastly, I have this final view of the property uh, to look at. So just so you know, uh, previous development really significantly changed the terrain. Um, as you can tell, there's a lot of uh, changes in elevation. Uh, there's some areas that are vegetative cover, but then there's also areas of concrete and asphalt. Um, but basically, it's, it's a clean slate to start with, and we wanted you to know that ADEQ's approval, it's all good to go. That's what we're here for. And we wanted to thank everyone also for their patience. We know this was kind of a long process. Sometimes it takes a while, but it was really a group effort between everyone to make sure that we did a thorough job to make sure that everything's safe for the environment and everyone for future generations for whatever you decide that you want to do with this property. And now I will pass it on. Thanks, Katie. Uh, so I'm Blaze Levin. I'm with Kansas State University's Technical Assistance to Brownfields program. And as you heard from Katie and, and you'll hear from me, Brownfields are a special kind of site that um, are really presents an opportunities to cities like this to get environmental issues taken care of or ruled out and to kind of get things rolling again with difficult properties. And we've been working with the city now for a number of years. We've had workshops here about brownfields and I've been working with the University of Arkansas and ADEQ um, to, you know, to get to where things are right now. And uh, we work and we do this kind of work in 21 states, kind of centered around the, the midsection of the country. So we work with um, large and small communities and I can say that this community really has things going on. They're really following the process. And uh, it was mentioned that it kind of takes a group to get these properties kind of going again. And so I just kind of wanted to illustrate that because I think you have a very broad base of support in this community. And uh, certainly we have local government folks here that kicked off the meeting and got this team together. Uh, but just, just so we see who's in the room, uh, how many business people are here? Can you just raise your hand if you're a business person? All right, that's awesome. A lot of potential for this site. How about uh, specifically developers or investors? Any, any folks there? Awesome. Got to have money, right, to, to make things go. Uh, how about um, residents of Hot Springs? Awesome. That's, you're, you're the focus for tonight. Uh, and anyone under 18 that's here? I see someone over there and someone over there. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, you're going to be running the show not too long from now. So, so everybody pay attention to them. Uh, I think we have a few people over the year, over 18 years old, so uh, I won't ask for a show of hands on that one. <laughs> But the point is, it takes a group to uh, really tackle these difficult, distressed sites. And, you know, the brownfields are called brownfields because they might have environmental issues. And so there were certainly some fears of that with the Majestic site. Uh, but they also usually, if the environmental issues could be ruled out or taken care of, offer great promise to a city to use however they think is going to benefit their community the most. And uh, that includes there's you know opportunities for funding the kind of funds that ADEQ used to to take care of some environmental work uh, there um, liability protections for future owners right uh, so so all of these things can really start the revitalization process preserve what you like best about your community and community input is is one of the requirements um, these these distressed properties you know if it was uh, a winner, it would already be developed into something, but it's, it's, it's been a difficult property and it takes the support of a community uh, seeing something they want on that property to really make it go. So that's why we're here tonight is to get your input about that so the city can consider it in its future planning. And there's kind of a four-step process that these, you have to go through to get these sites to really work and, and again, Hot Springs is really on top of things. Um, the environmental work's already done. Okay, so that's, that's a big green check mark. And there's good progress already on ideas, brainstorming of what folks want, would like to see this site become. So there's the Wordle diagrams on the side that, that Lance pointed out, the surveys that have been taken already. Um, there's, there's, I understand there's even business 
concerns in the area that have developed proposals. So, so all of that is very positive. That's, there's, you know, there's a future for this site. Uh, but, and we're here tonight to really, you know, just make sure the community's voice is heard and, and considered in this process. So that's what we're here tonight to talk about and to get your input from for. Um, once that is known, then um, we're even in a better position to seek funding and, and to select developers, partners, whoever, to, to uh, realize the end use of the site. Um, and, you know, realizing that these projects take a long time, this one's already taken a lot of time, right? And so it's always important to remember to, that probably you're going to have to make adjustments and things are going to take a while longer, even so. But the point of this is, a lot of progress for hot springs in this process. Okay, and of course, uh, you know, we're looking for, we're gonna produce some work products out of your input, um, maybe some diagrams, maybe rank order lists of preferences for uses for this location. Again, that helps attract and, and select developers if it's gonna be developed, you know, it, 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 it's, it's very useful in getting more, more money in one way or another. If you have these conceptual plans that you can you can shop around to, to funding agencies and to developers, so that they know what you want. And so, just thinking in the big picture, I know a lot of you have come with ideas, and that's awesome. Uh, we want to capture those ideas, but just trying to encourage you to think. You know, you've already heard a number of opinions about some things, and just think in the big picture what usually works best on on sites like this is some combination of economic uh, or of meeting economic environmental and community needs so if you think to yourself uh, what do we need that you know would meet an economic need or a community need maybe it's a social need of some kind or a need for recreational space or but you know what combination of all those things the environmental things have been kind of addressed but there's there's certainly a community wellness side of the environment that this site could address. This is a big laundry list. People do studies about what communities like in their communities all the time. And, and sure enough, uh, Lance Spicer has already solicited your input on what you would like uh, to see thus far. And so the bigger words are, you know, words that have been mentioned more, more often in these surveys. So again, uh, we're here to, to kind of refine that further. And uh, with that, I'll just turn it back over to uh, Noah, who will guide us through the process now of, of, of getting your input, finding out what you think. Thank you. Thanks, Blaze. OK, so now on with the, on with the show. Or we're, we're almost done with the, our show. Uh, so. After some brief instructions, we're going to get into some small group work and come back at around 8 o'clock to present our ideas briefly and then and also vote on ideas. Um, we're going to, um, I'll talk about the details of this in a minute, but for everyone who's seated, at, seated in, the, in the back corner or doesn't have a, a seat at the table, um, Lance and I are proposing that people work out in the hallway. We'll bring some materials for people to draw with. Um, and th so if you don't have a seat at the table now, we're going to set up, I don't know if we're going to get tables. Oh, oh they're up, they are setting up some additional tables. So it'll it, um, be a cooler place and we can, it, you can have some, a little bit more comfort and feel like you can get some, your ideas out there as well. So um, First thing I, we, we want you all to do is a SWOT analysis. Some of you may have done these before or heard of these. Um, this is, so on the tables, there's a diagram that has this quadrant of strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And the strengths and weaknesses are, it, we want you both, both as an individual and then together in your group to come up with the, the main strengths, weaknesses, and opportunities and threats um, regarding this project. And strengths and weaknesses are really identifying internal factors. And when we, we talk about internal, um, we're talking about the community of hot springs. What are internal strengths of hot springs? Um, what are the internal weaknesses of hot, 
hot springs. And then the opportunities and threats um, tend to refer to more external factors. So what are, what are opportunities and, and what, are, what are threats as well? And so this, this is both to help guide your table as you're talking about design and, and program ideas. And it's also something that we can take in our report and so your, your concerns can go forward. Yes. We're, we're, it could be both, but it's it's how it's it's it it could be hot springs, but it's related to the majestic. But some of the greater some of the greater weaknesses, for example, of hot springs could be could connect to majest the majestic. So, it, uh, ideally, his oh excuse me, his question was does does it refer to hot springs generally or this particular project? And I would say it can re relate to hot springs generally, but um, if, if it pertains to this project or you know, in, within the context of this development, I would say. Um, and as a group then, see if you can collate, um, quickly brainstorm by yourselves to this, this, this SWAT, and then if, see if your table can come up with a, a master SWAT list of, of the five to ten um, most pertinent ideas. Um, we also Uh, like that, it or? could be it could be traffic congestion. It could be um, it, it could be fi um, financial viability. It could be vacancies in adjacent properties. It could be um, some of the Greg mentioned some of the weaknesses um, in in terms of the what replaces the historical buildings often isn't as as good <laughs> as what was there. So um, or isn't of the highest and best use of what could be there, and so. The, it could, and it could also be site conditions. There could be specific technical um, weaknesses. And this isn't. This could take hours and hours to do. So it's it's meant to be a quick, quick brainstorming session to both help you all, but then to to help get some feedback. And I'm sorry oh. for clarification. So yeah. the strengths and the opportunities is for your particular idea or suggestion? Or it's for the project. For the so, project. Okay. Yeah, so strengths and opportunities, it's okay. all it's all relative to this to the majestic okay. project and and so a strength of the site we heard is that it's a clean slate. Okay. Right? And then there's the opportunity that's layered on top of that strength. Right. Does that yeah. help clarify? It helps. Yeah. Okay, sorry. No, that's fine. Uh, so the the other two things we we want to get from tonight are program and use ideas, and then also design ideas. So we, we want you to, and we'll keep this slide up so you can, you can refer to it, but after you do a SWOT analysis with your individually and as a group, um, we want you to um, start brainstorming ideas for program and use, and this is going to involve both your you're writing these ideas down and also come up with design ideas. And sometimes these things overlap. Um, we have, on, on each table, we've put some drawings. So that we have, there's an aerial image of the site. We, have, we also have an axonometric view. For those who are, are more inclined to three-dimensional drawing, this can be helpful. Um, there are plenty of, mar there are markers around. We have large, large post-it notes, and we also have trace paper. Um, okay, um, not quite ready. So when we when we're done, so at eight o'clock, we're going to have you post up on the on this wall over here, and if we need to, we can we can keep going on the walls. We have with your gigantic post-its, we want you to post the three to five most important design and programming priorities from your group. And then after, after we post those up, we, we want to have people vote on these ideas. So we'll, all, we'll pass out some dots. You can vote by going up and putting up the dots. And so when we, when we say report out three to five most pertinent ideas, that could be in, through drawing, that could be through 
bullet points and words. Um, it could be a combination of those things. And we'll be going around to um, work with tables as well. Uh, oh, yes, and each each table I forgot to mention should should appoint one scribe to write down at the end when you're writing down the main ideas and collective ideas from the group. Okay. Are there any questions? So, okay. Yes. No. There is a question. There is a question. Here, we have a question, Lance.